So before we get into looking at our color flips and our rotations in our red-black tree, I want to remind you of the rules for a red-black tree. So the first one is that the root is always black. And so whenever we do a manipulation, when we're done, we're just going to change the root and make it black. New nodes are red. We've already taken care of that in our add methods. When we add a node, by default, we make it red by setting the black Boolean to false. Null nodes are black. That's OK. We need to remember that when we're looking at our rules for rotations and color flips in a second. We're not allowed to have two consecutive red nodes. That's the primary rule that we're going to have to understand as we manipulate the tree. As long as we make sure that we don't have two consecutive red nodes, the rest of it should fall into place. And then we need the same number of black nodes on every path from root to leaf. And we can double check that at the end of every manipulation of the tree. There are two rules for how we manipulate the tree. If we have a node that's causing a violation, if its aunt is black, which means that either it's null or the black boolean is true, we do a rotation. And our rotations are the same rotations that we've seen, for example, in our AVL trees. So for our rotations, um, if we have the imbalance in the grandparents, left child's, left subtree, we're going to do a right, a right rotation. If we have the imbalance in the grandparents, right child's, right subtree, we're going to do a left rotation. If we have the imbalance in the grandparents, left right, we do a left right. And if we have the imbalance in the grandparents, right left, then we do a right left. Okay? Same rules for the rotation as we've already seen for other trees. If we have a red ant, then we're going to do a color flip. And a color flip just means just changing the colors. And then finally, if we do a color flip, we end up with two black nodes as the, the parent and the aunt, and the grandparent is red. And if we do a rotation, the parent and the aunt are red, and the grandparent is black. So we have to think about all of these rules as we're manipulating the tree. So the first thing that we want to do is just check the color at any node. So let's have a tree. So the first thing we want to do is check the color at any node and ask, at this node, are we violating any of the rules? If we are, then we'll have to fix it. Is this node violating any of the rules? If it is, then we have to fix the tree. And of course, if a node violates the rules, it's not the node that you manipulate, it's the grandparent. So we're going to start with a method that's going to take a single node. It's not going to return anything. And it's just going to check the color related to that node. Okay. It's going to be a recursive method. And of course, the way that we know that we're at the end is either that we're equal to the root node, this is root right here, or that parent is null. And so as we're going back up the tree, we're not going to do anything once we get to the root node. So we can say if node is equal to root, return. We don't need to check the color at the root node. There's no violations above it. So no two consecutive reds. So what that means is that if the node we're at is red and its parent is red, then we have a violation and we have to fix it at the grandparent, OK? So if the parent that we're at is red, then node.black is false, OK? And if its parent is red, 
So if not node.parent.black, that means it's red, then we've got two consecutive reds, and we have to do something to correct the tree. I like to keep my methods short so that I can debug them easily and that I can understand what's going on when I look at my code. And so what I'm going to do here is just call a method that's going to figure out whether we've got a black aunt or a red aunt. And so I'm going to call my correct tree, and I'm going to pass it the node that's caused the violation. By doing that, it means I know I've got a violation at this node. I've got to do something to correct it. Go ahead and do that. Similarly, if we figure out that we've got the different number of black nodes, we can figure out where the violation is. We could pass in the node. We could do something to correct it. If we've done the node that we're at, if we've corrected it, then we need to go up the tree. Remember, as we're adding nodes, we need to make sure that our manipulation that we've just done doesn't introduce another violation. For example, after a color flip, we set the parent to red. Maybe the node above that is red, and we've introduced a new violation. And so we're going to recurse up the tree, and we're just going to call check color. And we're going to pass in node.parent. And that will just move up the tree until we get to the root node. So what about our correct tree method that we're going to call from our check color method? So we're going to have a public void correct tree method. And that's going to take, of course, just a single node. And this is the node that's causing a violation. And it's going to figure out how we have to correct it. So what this method is going to do is it's going to say, for the node that we're at, is the aunt black? And if it's black, then we have to do a rotation. For the node that we're at, is the aunt red? And if it's red, we'll do a color flip. As I said, I like to keep my methods very short. So what I'm going to do in this method is I'm going to say, if we have a red aunt, we have to do a color flip. So let's go ahead and do that. If we have a black aunt, we have to do a rotation. And of course, the rotation is more complex because we need to figure out if we have a left child, or, sorry, the, if the violation is in the left subtree's left child, or the right, and so on. Whether we're going to do a left rotation, a right rotation, a left right, or a right left. And so I'm going to punt on actually doing the rotations to another method. So first of all, what we need to do is figure out if our aunt is black or our aunt is red. Okay? And the way that we do that is for any node, we find its parent. We figure out, is the parent a left child, in which case the aunt is the grandparent's right child? Or if we figure out the parent is a right child, the aunt is the grandparent's left child. The other thing that we need to remember is that null nodes are black. Okay? So let's ask first if node.parent is a left child, then we're going to have then we know that our aunt will be the grandparent's right child. So let's just make a comment here so we remember that that the aunt is node.parent.parent. That's our grandparent, right. Okay? So that means the, the aunt is the grandparent's right child. So if the grandparent's right child is black, if the aunt is black, we're going to do a rotation. So if the grandparent's node.parent.parent, the grandparent's right child is black. Now remember, we may be in a situation where our grandparent doesn't actually have a right child. So we can't immediately call node.parent.parent.right. We know that we have a, a parent and that we have a grandparent. But we don't know whether we have a right child. So we can say if node.parent.parent.right 
is equal to null or node dot parent dot parent dot right black is true so we've got an if statement so if node dot parent dot parent dot right is equal to null that means it's black and if node dot parent dot parent dot right is black that means that our aunt is black and we have to do a rotation and so we can return rotate and the node that we're going to pass into the rotation is the current node that we are at right now. So if our aunt is not black, that means our aunt is red. And so if our aunt is red, we're going to have to do a color flip. So when we do a color flip, it means we set the parent to black, the grandparent to red, and the aunt to black. And so we have to remember again that whether our aunt is null. Okay, so if we don't do a rotation, we have to say, um, first of all, if node.parent.parent.write is not equal to null, then that's our aunt, and so we're going to set our aunt to black. Node.parent.parent.write.black is going to be true. Now we've got to set our grandparent to red and our parent to black. So let's set our grandparent node.parent.parent and we're going to set that to red. So we set black equal to false and node.parent.black is equal to true. Okay? So we've done our color flip, we've done our rotation. That's if the parent is a left child. We can return here. We don't need an else statement because we've handled if it's a left child, uh, sorry, if it's a right child. And now we can just say the aunt is grandparent dot left. And we're going to have exactly the same piece of code right here, except, of course, where we're talking about node.parent.parent.write. We're going to say node.parent.parent.left. Node.parent.parent.write is null. Node.parent.parent.left is null. Okay? So underneath our handling of the aunt being the right, we have the same code with the aunt being the left. And that's going to complete a correct tree method. So you need to add code for aunt is equal to node dot parent dot parent dot left. Okay, it's the same code that's here. You just change the lefts and the rights. Hoi.